everyone, welcome back to Hacky Lessons and I have Damuki here who has just come runner up in our store champs at Gough Long and he has a very interesting deck to show us today. What have you got for us, Damuki? Alrighty, I played a very weird deck called Iceberg. Um, I don't know how I came second with it, I probably shouldn't have, but I did. Uh, my run today was actually relatively difficult as well. Um, round one I versed Katakuri, which I think is like one of the worst matchups for the deck. Um, they just out heal you and you're sort of like a slow grind deck, so it's a really bad matchup on paper and in reality as well. Uh, second I versed Ace. I think it's like a relatively even matchup, probably slightly Ace favoured, but when they draw nothing but Fire Fist, it's so good because they can't play the game. <laughs> I play the game. Uh, round three, <laughs> this shouldn't have happened. I versed Arlong. I don't know how he was 2-0 at that point. Uh, but the guy's a really good player, and so I had no experience going into the Arlong Iceberg matchup. I don't think anyone does. What's the yellow stuff? Uh, it's a mixture of yellow and green, mainly yeah. yellow though. Yeah, um, I think that's the best way to build it. So I sort of played it like how I treat Katakuri where, but I knew he couldn't tend drop Big Mummy, so I was just like trying to focus on controlling the board. Uh, and then in the finals I versed Kuro, which is another really weird matchup. Uh, I think... On paper, I win that matchup, but unfortunately, I just had a bit of a bad luck around in the middle of the game with draws. Yeah. Uh, but it was still super close, and it literally came down to him going Ezo, swinging twice with his leader uh, to clear my board, and then I just couldn't attack because you know, only Iceberg was on field, and that was game. Yeah, and he won store champs at uh, Tech Zone on Saturday as well, so he's back to back, so. Yeah, you know, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also like don't have too much experience fully playing Iceberg in a tournament setting, uh, and that's just usually because I play other really bad decks. So like, you, like, you like the meme? Yeah, you know, like I think Blurple Spiral Croc is a funny deck, and I like that. You know, Jack approves. <laughs> um, but anyways, let's just get into how I played the deck of the day. So the leader is Iceberg. Uh, he can't attack, which is a really bad trait, and to make up for it, they gave him a mediocre trait, which is you can negate Don rest him. Uh, and then play a Galilag type character card from your hand, or five costs or less, mm -hmm. which sort of lets you establish your field, but at the same time you burn through your hand super quickly whilst doing that. So you need to be really selective on when you can use this effect. Uh, but the Galilag cards have some interesting ones, and I'm going to get into them now. So the first Galilag card I absolutely love is Tilestone. Uh, he is, when he dies, you ramp it on. So this is super important because if you play him early on and you lose the Don, uh, you lose him, you get the Don back so you can sort of like pump out your bigger boys in on curve nicely. Uh, and he sort of like lets you just sort of swing into their field early on if they play any like Rush Zoro or Weenies that, and then they attack with him. Um, up next is another Galilar card which is for Kaku. Uh, this is kind of the weird card. Um, a lot of people say Kaku is a three of or a two of and he's like the worst one um i'm literally running him just because he's a galilar company the banish effect was like relevant in one matchup and that was against the arlon player um but overall just once again another five or six k being sick that you pay off your leader uh up next lucci uh rob lucci uh this card i was originally running a three in my list but he's basically purple Akiku, and the Negwon Don effect's not too bad with some of the other cards in this deck giving you Don, so he's pretty good like that. Um, didn't win me a game, I don't think, but, you know, I don't think any card individually can win you a game in this deck. It's a lot of just making sure you're one step ahead of the opponent. Uh, up next is PP Poo Poo. Uh, he's Don 1 when attacking. If you Iceberg Leader, Ramp Don in rest mode. Um, he's really good if you don't see the stage, and the stage is Onigashima effectively for the deck. Um, unfortunately, he is 5k. If he was 6k, he would be like an amazing play, but since he's 5k, a lot of decks are ready to swing into that. So I find if you play him and you ramp once, he's probably going to die the turn after, unless if you like have a board full of blockers. Uh, up next is a really good card, is Khalifa. Uh, so she's Neglon Don when attacking, draw two, discard one, uh, which is absolutely insane in the deck. You can get some obscene hand sizes once you sequence your boards like correctly, because you can have a turn where you go Khalifa into like a couple of queens, and you just sort of cycle a whole bunch of cards and get like three extra cards in hand, which is really nice to see. Um, and then up next, sorry, uh, we run three poly. Uh, I know people run four, but I find that lack of counter is really 
painful in the deck. And he's only really useful if you open really well on turn three. Otherwise, it's like turn four or five before his effect's live. Would you, if you're in need of ramping a Don, would you play him before his effect is live? I mean, you can, but it's a waste. I don't think the Don's ever relevant to the ramp. I think the neg uh, the killing a four cost or less is way more important. Right, okay. Especially because the way I play this deck is a lot more of board control, right? I only swing board. And having a turn where you can play poorly and kill something and then follow up with like a queen blocker sort of lets you regain a lot of tempo that you might have lost in the first few turns. Yep. Um, up next, a really simple card uh, for Kokoro. This is just your Nami searcher for the deck. Searches basically everything. It's really good. Um, I don't ever have issues whiffing on that, which is lovely to see, but I'll be shocked if I did. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the Galila pack. Go double check the next card. Oh, sorry. So that's the Galila package. Yep. So that's basically what the leader plays for free and the searcher. Um, now I'm just getting into some of the more generic Water 7 ca cards. So. Only two. Only two two cost blockers, and that's just because I fear Whitebeard. Um, right. Just a bit of extra. Yeah, like if I play a turn, I think this is only good like on a turn one if I go second. Yeah. And anything else is pretty dead in hand. I find I don't ever have the like resource management to keep it alive or block a worthwhile attack against. Maybe Big Mum it's alright, but I assume, you know, mm. it's not going to live. So yeah, think, fair. At least it's got counter power. Yeah, I think it's just a good card to have in hand in some matchups and early on it's good defense. Yep. Uh, up next is the stage, which is basically Onigashima, so you rest it, ramp it on. Really good card, you need to run four of it, but if you don't see it, you can still play. It's not as bad as Kaido when you whiff the stage, yeah. um, but it's still pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and that's it for the Water 7 package, so that is most of the deck. So if, it is really good to see that like most of the deck is the budget cards you can find. So yeah, it really, would be a pretty cheap deck, even like max and rarity on yeah, the polys. Yeah, if you don't go for stamp, like everything is still relatively cheap. And at the time of shooting, poly was like six US dollars. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. Wow. So, you know, he's a uh, lobby named who paid 300 effectively for just a poly. Kind of got robbed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Up next, uh, these are the generic good purple cards. So, four queen. I think nearly every single purple deck runs four queen. It's a good card. Good card. If you don't know what it does by now, I'm shocked. Uh, up next, two king. So, hey, look, the purple starter deck's pretty good. You know, good cards, still good. Up next, uh, two nine drop Kaidos. Wanted uh, posters. Yeah, I've got the wanted versions. I think it looks pretty ugly, but you know. I mean, they look nice, but yeah. I. I feel like they'd be better as uh, maybe lead cards or, or Don cards even. Yeah, um, I know some people aren't running Kaido in their list. I think the rush aspect of him just sort of lets you seal out games or like yeah. re-establish board control with one card. And it's rush and it's a big. Yeah, like, so like... My instinct would be to use Luffy, but big, big Kaido. Yeah, so at, not this tournament, the tournament prior, I was versing Film Kid. And Rush cut like they did seven cost Luffy, and in response I did ten drop Kaido to kill. I think the five cost, oh, like a five cost Frankie, and then also just swing. Um, he was at low life, so he had to actually block with a Luffy just play, and it sort of just made his turn a waste, and it gave me insane pressure by having a ten K on field that he now can't easily remove. Yeah. Um, up next, uh, the last character I will actually play in the deck is Guild Tesoro. Uh, Neg two Don, draw two cards when attacking. Really good in this deck because if he sometimes gets set up, you have the stage uh, people on the field and then you ramp two Don a turn anyways just by game mechanics. So he can just start ramping cards like from your deck into hand way too quickly if people can't deal with it. Right. And considering the games go for a relatively long time with this deck because you don't have immediate finishes like Whitebeard or Big Mum, he can get you a hand size of like 10 or 12 and it just sort of is hilarious. Um, I've had one point where I had like 15 cards in hand and I was like, wait, this shouldn't happen. Like, <laughs> I just win here. Right. And another game last tournament where I nearly decked out and I think I was versing like a green deck or something which can relatively search a lot in regards as well so it was really interesting. Uh, last character though is four, uh, three Judge Sadies. I am a judge. 
That's why I run three Sadies. Card is bad, X Drake is better in every single way, but I don't have Judge X Drakes. That's right. And yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta let people know. Yeah, you gotta flex. Who's and getting judged? Last card, four judgment of hell. <laughs> purple staple card. If you don't run it, I don't know why you're playing purple. Like, it's it's pretty damn good. It, like, how many taxes it uh, get rid of? Like two. Um, I know in the Arlong matchup, it effectively probably won me the game. Yep. Because it was just back to back judgment of hell, so he couldn't ever swing. And like, he could establish Don afterwards, but like, he's lost board. Oh, like he couldn't play cards onto the board then, and it's just, I didn't swing into it anyways, and he lost it. So, yeah, Judgment of Hell is a really good card. Um, fully recommend. Absolutely. Um, and that is the deck overall. Uh, it was actually really interesting to learn to play this deck, because it's not like straightforward, like some decks. So, I know like Katakuri, for instance, wants to just go Katakuri on 8 and then Big Mom on 10. But like the lines of play for this deck aren't super linear. They're always relative to what you've got in hand and what is happening on the game state. So for instance, if they've got a board, you don't like Paul is obviously going to be a good choice and that sounds straightforward. But if they don't have a board, you need to think what's what do I need to be having ready for the next two turns to have a chance of winning? And yeah. if you don't think like that, I find the deck's just really bad. <laughs> it is definitely a deck where you have to think a little bit harder than ever any other yep. deck. But at the same time, like, if you go into turns where you've got uh, six Don before you, like, ramp your Don, oh, five Don, sorry. So your turn three most games, like I try and go for, is, like, stage into poorly, and that lets you have six Don active, so then you can follow up with, like, a king or a queen blocker, and, like, that's such an insane tempo swing, turn three, that normally a lot of decks can't deal with, and you can sort of win on the spot there. But once again, if you miss sequence and then swing with them too early, uh, you just lose. Um, this deck's really made me realize swinging every single turn is not optimal. So if I swing with like a card turn two, it's because I'm assuming I can defend it. If I can't defend these cards and I lose my board, I just lose the game. Right. So you have to be really overprotective of your cards and your life doesn't matter too much in relation to that. So I find Sometimes I go to three life before I actually start swinging and that's just because I want to really focus on killing their board not giving them cards in hand and trying to establish a small uh, advantage that way before going into uh, Right, that's, and that's like you wouldn't, wouldn't think to do that like unless you really thought about it like I, I see what you mean like, Yeah, so Because once you lose that board if, unless you're using a rush card and if, I only have two, like, yeah. I can't attack and then they just get free reign and swing in. So you need to make it as punishing for your opponent as possible to swing at, like, to swing at you. Um, and I was having a really nice discussion with the Arlon player after the game, and we both came to the conclusion, if he doesn't swing at me and only goes, like, 7k with leader, it's really hard for me to deal with. Like, yeah. sure, and then he establishes a board and then he just goes one big push and that might be the way to deal with it. Yep. But, you know, if I'm playing around Arlong that hard, I'm very confused as well. Like, <laughs> it shouldn't happen, you know? Yes. Um, overall, though, I really like the deck. I think it's really underrated. Uh, I was talking with a lot of the other guys in the scene a couple of nights ago, and we were, like, trying to figure out where some decks actually fall in the meta when created their own tier list. And we honestly all sort of came to the agreement that Iceberg is roughly mid-tier which is way higher than absolutely, like, anyone would probably think initially without looking yeah. at the deck. Well, it's all how you play it, really. Yeah, um, and I'm really lucky to have a couple of other Iceberg players in the scene as well, which is really odd to say. <laughs> like, I, we, I may need to play it at some point. It's a really fun deck, um, and I'm hoping I can, like, keep playing this deck and get a bit better at it. I think I didn't sequence it perfectly all day today, but, you know... Got me, got me second, I'll take it. Yeah, and you went 3-1 with it last week as well. Yeah, I went 3-1 with it last week. Uh, this time I got Gecko Warriors as a prize. Nice. Uh, and yeah. The old onion bag. Yep. Guess I have to play Dofi now. <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. I'm super active on the community Discord, so if you have any questions about it, feel free to message me. I believe there's an iceberg thread. It's like oh, iceberg over the Titanic or something. I don't know. Right. Um... um What's your what's your Discord name? My Discord name is Demuki, much like my, the nickname I go through with basically everything. Yep. 
hopefully you see me judging out events because you don't want to burst this deck and I don't <laughs> want to play this deck out of events. That's right. Um, That's how you get those judge promos. Yeah. Uh, overall though, it's a, been a really enjoyable deck and I fully recommend people exploring it. I feel like I'm learning more as a player playing this deck because of the limitations the cards and the deck provide. You have to think about things differently. But. Yeah, I mean, even like your explanations, like I never thought about it like that way as far as like, I've only given Iceberg a couple goes yeah. by myself at home. And yeah, hearing insights of how you played it and done well with it is, is pretty valuable. Yeah, um, just quick breakdown of how I think the deck performs against the meta. I think it's really okay into red. I'm not saying it beats red, but I find I struggle less against red than the other meta decks, which is really, really quite nice. <laughs> Um, that could just be them not knowing the matchup, but I'll take it. Uh, Katakuri is like your worst matchup. Um, really, really bad matchup. They played 10 drop big mum, you lose. And there's too many Katakuris about. Yeah, there's so many Katakuris in locals. Uh, up next we have Luchi. Uh, I think this deck loses to Luchi, but it's not bad. Um, like, you just... It's just board control. All their costs... Like, if they're playing the Navy version, they have to lose cards from hand, so... You sort of try and board control them that way. And if they play the CP version, I think that's just the worst version, so you don't care anyways. Um, otherwise, Green Kid, I've never lost to. Yep. Uh, I don't know if there's any other relevant green leaders, really. Um, Not really. Have you lost Kuro? Oh yeah, I've lost oh, Kuro. Wait, and wait, I no, lost to Kuro, Kuro, actually, sorry. That's my right. mistake. Uh, but I still think this wins against Kuro. Kuro is really good at resting four cost lower. Yeah. That Yeah, how did the game against Kuro go? Because you said you bricked. Yeah, bit. so I opened um stage, which is generally why I kept it. Uh, but then I noticed after keep saying keep, I only had one Galley La company in hand, so I played that turn one, it was Tilestone. That Tilestone lived for about four turns, which I was super thankful for. But <laughs> I then proceeded to not really draw another Gelly Lark company for the entire game. So, oh. up until like the second last turn, I was like, ugh. And the Kuro play is really good. He knew he had to clear board every single turn to have a chance. And so he just got to the point where he was using leader effect to rest my five cost and I played to then swing into them. Yeah. Um, so he played the matchup perfectly. And that's just because he's got iceberg experience, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you can take so many games just like. Yep. Having matchup experience. Um, I think overall, though, the deck's really fun. I encourage you to check it out. Just, yeah. Uh, best of luck, guys. You'll need it. All right. Thanks for the profile, Damuki. And good luck to the future endeavors of the Iceberg deck. Thank you. We'll never see it first place. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. It, it's getting there. It's getting there. Yeah. I mean, you've gone 3 1 twice in a row, so the next step is 4 0. Yeah, I just need to have that last momentum. Yeah. But nah, it's really fun. Um, the Kuro game was ridiculously close as well. I know I made it sound probably worse than it is, but he was on zero life. So it was literally top deck rush kind of a game. <laughs> <laughs> but oh well, it happens. Um, yeah, no, nah, happy with that. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Enjoy. All right, thank you. See you. Later.